Hey, hello everyone. My name is Matej Serins. Um, I'm the lead test automation engineer from Testdale Labs. Uh, today I'm here in Riga office in our hardware lab and I'm going to uh, give you a quick uh, presentation about battery usage, battery usage testing for mobile apps. Um, yeah, this is the first webinar from Testdale Labs and this is going to cover this uh, important performance uh, testing topic. So let's get on with the presentation and uh, what is battery testing? So battery testing helps uh, to check software against performance requirements. Basically uh, during performance testing, um, during performance testing we are checking uh, how, how, how software performs. Uh, but during uh, functional testing we check if it works and so as battery is part of a performance testing it is done after functional tests and is done in more rare occasions than functional testing so yeah and <clears throat> this is a method for measuring power consumption uh, for software process which is executed on specific software uh, and hardware platform so let's go on and uh, so I will answer you why do we need to test mobile battery usage. Uh, so first of all, uh, battery life is one of the key factors when uh, that cu uh, customer uh, has to kind of, uh, which has to go through uh, when purchasing a smartphone. Also, uh, when uh, software developers uh, publish their uh, applications to uh, market, uh, often we receive customer complaints about high battery usage of this specific software application. So it's important to check it out, test it, and also to uh, get some information and insight about how does the app uh, perform. So uh, among the key factors which affect the battery usage on a mobile smart device uh, is basically what modules and what components uh, are on this device and how they uh, affect the battery. So amongst the most uh, battery consuming components we can uh, list in GPS and location services, uh, Bluetooth and NFC services, mobile data with SIM card, especially when we have uh, 3G, 4G networks uh, or no network at all. So these affect battery life. And uh, next we have uh, something misconfigured in uh, device settings, for instance, uh, screen brightness. Uh, often we uh, use screen brightness to the full maximum and this of course affects the, uh, affects the battery life of this device. Uh, yeah, we often recommend to uh, uh, use uh, battery saving mode as this mode uh, mostly allows us to uh, disable some modules and uh, basically optimize the uh, device battery consumption. Uh, when when uh, we talk about, op uh, about uh, development of software we often uh, uh, like recommend software uh, color optimized design. Respectively, uh, often if we use a design that has light uh, background or white colors uh, it consumes more battery as it brightens the display more. So uh, it is recommended to use a uh, darker screen instead. Yeah, so these are just some factors, but these are the most noticeable ones uh, which affect the battery life. So it is, it, it is also uh, common uh, to check these applications or mo on mobile devices themselves in various states. So uh, usually we test uh, application when it is running in active state. So in this state it of course consumes the most battery. Uh, so it's like uh, web browsing, emails, voice calls, video calls, streaming, everything that you do when uh, your mobile device is in active state. Uh, of course the application can take uh, suspended or inactive state and also it can be killed completely. So in this suspended state, although uh, some processes are running, uh, the, the processor might idle, but uh, some uh, network activity still might be present. So uh, when we kill the app uh, entirely, uh, we rely on push notification services and other services which kind of 
uh, allows us to be present in some kind of virtual uh, service. So uh, this activity can also be monitored uh, on that mobile device. Yeah, so uh, later I will talk about uh, platforms and methods that we use here um, in TestDev Lab to test uh, battery, uh, battery uh, consumption. So the first uh, thing is, of course, uh, to use customer tools. Uh, for instance, you download some kind of app which uh, shows you uh, how many percent of battery is left. Of course, Android is more verbose about this. Uh, on iOS, you just see some kind of uh, bar with percentage of uh, left battery. So uh, this is the most simplest case, but it's strictly manual and uh, strictly depends on uh, the application itself or on the system. Um, yeah, in some cases, uh, and, and next thing, like the next step is uh, to use development tools. So developers are more advanced people. So there are built-in tools for Android, like for Android Studio, we can have ADB plus uh, battery historian to monitor not only, um, to profile not only CPU and memory, but also to profile uh, the battery impact. Uh, also um, for iOS, we have Xcode instruments where we have this uh, neat energy log, uh, but the most difference like for these tools uh, and laboratory approach, which I'll talk about later, the most difference is that these tools do estimation, estimation of uh, consumed power or consumed energy, and they base often on CPU uh, and GPU uh, utilization. So the good thing about these tools is that they allow you to, um, they allow you to estimate uh, battery consumption on virtual devices, on emulators and simulators, which don't have any actual battery. But in case if you need to really uh, get some numbers out of a real device, uh, you you would like to you would like to get out some kind of uh, not estimated numbers but real uh, usage of the energy of this current device specific one etc uh, etc et so therefore in uh, test dev lab uh, our approach is to use a monsoon power monitor basically this this tool is uh, platform agnostic by meaning that you can uh, attach android or ios or iot device to it, basically, uh, you can use um, third-party approach on uh, any device which is running on battery or is USB powered. So, yeah. Now I'm going to show and tell you more about exactly this approach. So, the main thing which we use here is the power monitor. I don't know if you can see it in the in the screen on my desk. So, this box is. Uh, the thing so we attach a mobile device to it so and uh, it allows us to uh, sample the actual um, to sample the actual battery consumption from this device and uh, we can read the samples later on on the computer uh, I actually I'm going to show you the demo in short so uh, I'm gonna tell you more about the power monitor itself. So what this software and hardware allows us to do is to get real-time measurements with high precision and high sample rate. Uh, by meaning that we can uh, get up to 5,000 samples per second and uh, the precision is about one, uh, one milliamps so or 0.1 milliamps. So um, it's enough for us to kind of uh, uh, look, in, look deeper and analyze deeper uh, on how and what happens in terms of battery usage. Uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> the main feature for this box is to uh, emulate the built-in battery. So, uh, we actually disassemble this device and take out its original battery and replace it with a battery box, which is supplying a continuous voltage and during this, uh, during the tests, we actually obtain the samples from this box. So uh, on the computer screen, we can later on uh, retrieve these uh, uh, samples and see some nice graphs. 
so yeah, I will go on with uh, the device setup itself. Um, yeah, this is this is the basic setup. As I mentioned to you, uh, you can see uh, the the phone battery is completely taken out of the device, and uh, basically what we do, you can see here, this is the leftover from a uh, Samsung Galaxy S8 battery. Uh, the battery um, uh, the battery charger chip is left so that the device thinks that the actual battery is there and that it's charging but actually it's powered from the box and the actual lithium ion battery uh, is taken out of this uh, device so yeah this is how it looks and um, later on you can see on the on the right side uh, our setup usually consists uh, from uh, like a uh, computer of course uh, host computer we uh, attach a power monitor to this host computer and we attach the mm, mobile phone to this power monitor device but we also know that uh, if we want to measure battery consumption our device needs to discharge it cannot be charging while we test it so in order to achieve uh, device this charging state uh, actually this uh, power monitor device allows us to attach also USB connection and during the test this USB connection is automatically disconnected um, where after the test it is connected back to the host so this uh, approach allows us to not only um, charge device a bit because we need we have halfway tricked device uh, and these modules into thinking that uh, we are actually on battery but they still have uh, mechanisms that will decrease the ba uh, battery percentage over time so we need to charge it a bit uh, after the test and of course we can get some additional logs additional automation scripts can be run that require a computer to be connected to this smartphone so uh, quite useful feature um, okay so enough about this setup yeah of course uh, dedicated network so uh, of course this device is uh, connected to a specific uh, network device which is a dedicated router uh, as we call it so uh, we can route the traffic through this device during the test and also get some measurements of the traffic uh, like the Wireshark traces and uh, also it allows us to uh, shape the traffic or uh, add specific network limitations or conditions while we are doing uh, the battery monitoring okay so the test procedure so in test Dell labs our engineers uh, who work with uh, battery tests usually rely on strict procedure that uh, starts with of course defining some use case like a test case so we need to know for sure what is the scenario we need to know for sure uh, what are the per, uh, preconditions and additional details that we need to set up on this device before uh, prior to testing so uh, as i mentioned before um, there are several preconditions that uh, really affect the battery life and uh, these test results so for instance we need to know if device is running on wireless network or is running on uh, 4g network so uh, in order to achieve the repeatability of these tests and to minimize the mistakes and errors we need to be very precise on these preconditions so for instance in this case we have a precondition that device is connected to the mobile network and it must be connected to the mobile network with SIM card uh, at all times so because if we uh, will uh, remove the SIM card in one of the tests we will get uh, incorrect readings uh, next thing is that we need of course to execute this test case and the execution time varies so uh, we can do really short test uh, for milliseconds uh, that will just check one simple request or just one short running feature or we can have a test that is uh, 6 to 12 hours uh, to test for some kind of longevity longevity runs or to test for uh, some specific use case for instance we background our application put it in a pocket for a day and then we see that it discharges so we can simulate the same use case with the battery box 
and it allows us to collect samples for, uh, for instance, for a day. Um, yeah. And later on, I will show you uh, about the test case execution. I will show you a quick demo with the sample, uh, with the example, with the example, and uh, yeah, this is about that. So I guess that's demo time. Enough speaking. Let's do something. So first of all, I will switch to switch my screen to something else. So um, mm -hmm, just two seconds. Okay, ready. And what you see on the screen, except me, uh, of course, you see a power monitor software which is actually currently measuring something from a device uh, lying here on my desk. So this is iPhone X. We have disassembled it for a good reason to have this webinar. So you see there is, uh, there are all wires hanging on it, but I will not pick it up because we might break something. Instead, you see on the right side, uh, I'm sharing a screen from this device. So. Uh, you will see what I'm doing on, on screen uh, while we are doing the battery measurements. <clears throat> so before, first things first, so um, in order to run this device on a fake battery, we need to know the voltage. So for this iPhone, we have set the voltage here to 3.8 volts, but it shows something else right now because it's actually charging from the USB. Once we will start the test, you will see that the voltage will drop and that we will see the actual current that is consumed from this device while it's being uh, discharged. Discharged. Um, next thing, but not the least, like not the least, is uh, we need to set the battery size because uh, this tool allows us to estimate the expected battery life and it uh, relies on real parameters. So we can set here. Uh, for instance, iPhone X is a uh, uh, default factory set uh, battery size, which is here 2.7 uh, amps, amper hours. And now we are almost ready to run the test. Uh, what else we need? I think we, we will set this test duration to stop automatically after, um, let's say, one minute. That'll be enough. Uh, next thing is uh, I'm going to run the test right now and you will start to see that uh, some graph is being plotted here. So this is the real-time uh, graph of instant current uh, taken from the device. So on the right side I will lock the screen of the device and you will see that this uh, consumption of uh, amps will uh, clearly drop. Uh, there might be some process running at this time but you'll see that uh, once I unlock the screen, we will have uh, a really uh, increased battery consumption because we are starting to actually use the device screen. And now we are going to run uh, some, launch some app. I will launch uh, YouTube. Uh, I think you guys are also now on YouTube, so I'll do something similar to what you are doing right now. And uh, I will I will start streaming some video. So there will be some uh, network activity involved, and there will be some uh, actions what I am going to do on screen during this test. Okay. So yeah, this was a short one. So the test stopped, uh, but the video is going on. So what we we could see here is some kind of activity, some kind of spike. Uh, we are not going to deep dive into what happens in the background right now. Uh, it, it was enough for us to capture uh, this uh, occurrence. And now I'm going to run a one more short test and unpause the video. So the video continues and you can see that I'm doing some action during this test. And you will see immediate uh, spikes on the graph which kind of correspond to what I'm doing. I'm just pausing and unpausing the video. Or I can go and scroll the video way more than it's buffered so we can see uh, some immediate activity uh, from network that it's, it's actually downloading something and then buffering. So uh, unluckily this was already buffered for me, but still you could see that additional spike there. 
So this is what happens here. And uh, once we have captured, uh, once we have captured some uh, battery traces, we can uh, go on and analyze them. So except for just inspecting these graphs, uh, we can also select a region. Let me quickly uh, scroll to some region. And we can already see here in the stats section, not, not sure how visible it is, but here in the stats section, you can see how many samples I have selected and how much energy was consumed and how many milliamps were consumed while doing the selected action. Uh, usually we are just running the test uh, and getting the average from the whole interval, for instance, for a 10 minute test. Uh, but uh, if if interested, we we can also select some specific region and check the stats. So, for instance, for selected region, uh, we are consuming uh, 372 milliamps on average. And if we would do this action and only this action, our device would last for 7.28 hours. So, and that's how uh, these numbers are obtained from the box. Uh, yeah. That's about the demo. Well, I, I also wanted to mention to you that Tesla Lab have uh, quite a set of these devices which are actually disassembled. You can see here on the screen. This is actually the first iPhone 5, iPhone 4S or iPhone 4 even. So it was disassembled for one of the first battery tests. Now it's not used, but still nice to have. Um, yeah, we support Android and iOS platforms. For iOS, we have devices from this guy up to this guy, from iPhone 4 to iPhone X. And for Android, it is more sim simplistic. Uh, we have around, I guess, around 50, 15 uh, disassembled devices. Half of them are Androids. And it doesn't depend that much on the manufacturer. It's uh, simpler to work, actually, with Androids than with iOS. But still, we managed to hack into this guy. Uh, this iPhone X has two batteries and we tricked it into thinking that this box is the two batteries. So that's, that's kind of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, one thing to mention that one of these, each of these boxes uh, can be uh, paired, like paired, but can work only with one mobile device, not more. Uh, therefore, in Tesdale Lab, we have uh, a bunch of these boxes, and so that we can work on 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 simultaneously on multiple platforms and work also share with uh, different projects. And worth mentioning is also that uh, once we do the battery testing as a service, uh, we also kind of uh, perform these uh, hacking actions and disassemble the phone. Actually, the <clears throat> the manufacturer of this box allows that allows you to also uh, do the same service, but in this case we also do it. Uh, it's it's kind of included in the pricing. So yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on to the presentation. Let me quickly switch to it. Okay, so now, now you can, I guess, see uh, the iPhone X from inside with the two batteries. And let's go on to what we can get after we, are, we have performed the battery test. So here you can see the report. Uh, basically, the report has all the structure as we defined in our test case. So in this uh, report, you can see result from a single test which was uh, performed on three different uh, software versions on a single device, some Samsung Galaxy S5. And this was a six hour test with the screen locked and device being in background. Uh, what is worth mentioning here, you can see the red, red bars which uh, correspond to baseline. Uh, for each test where we uh, are doing the battery, we are doing the battery measurements, uh, there, of course, is some kind of uh, addition, like I would say that uh, the actual application has just a small portion of the whole battery consumption. So in order uh, to get this portion out, we need to do baseline testing. 
So first of all, we are doing a baseline test without this application under the same exact conditions. Then we repeat this test with this, with this application. So we can remove uh, the baseline, like the effects of device and system from the results. And you can see clear on, on, the, on the blue side of this bar, uh, this is the actual uh, application process consumed uh, energy. Uh, so in order to get this uh, thing precisely, like to get to do this pr uh, precisely, we need to define and execute the test case several times uh, with, without uh, mistakes. So it's re uh, it's uh, repeatable, and also uh, yeah, these tests rely heavily on automation uh, to be more uh, repeatable. Um, yeah, so battery result itself is not uh, is nothing it's, it's just showing okay it's showing you how much of battery does the app draw but what to do with it right uh, so we need to uh, do combinations of different measurements and usually we do them together at the same time so uh, multiple traces multiple uh, uh, we say multiple um, parameters or uh, multiple combinations of these uh, stats are obtained at the same time. For instance, battery tests, network tests, uh, CPU, memory tests, these are conducted simultaneously in order to see if something correlates in the results. So for instance, if we say that if we see that we have a spike in the battery consumption and increased, res uh, increased uh, result uh, values, we need to check what happened with the network. Was it uh, was network responsible for these actions? Some kind of activity in the background, or uh, was it GPU or CPU which was uh, doing something uh, out of out of uh, I would say uh, abnormally doing something? Uh, okay, and there there uh, then we can start to identify some issues, and that's that's what. Uh, we are actually doing and you that's what we are using these reports for um, okay now I'm back to the statistics uh, so if we do these tests repeatedly uh, from uh, one version of the software application to another version uh, eventually we end up with having a lot of statistics uh, these statistics are useful for um, for monitoring in long term how the product uh, or the software how does it behave does it does it get better does it get worse in terms of uh, performance and in terms of battery consumption <coughs> so here we can see uh, some perspectives which uh, often uh, are helpful for instance uh, we can we can check how the software works uh, by running this on different devices on different device module mo models on different OS versions and then compare them also we are doing uh, like uh, version by version checks for the same software where we can see okay this version uh, has a bug fix uh, did the battery improve uh, this version has a something new some additional feature has it uh, increased in battery consumption and things like that and of course another useful feature for this is uh, as I mentioned before we are using third-party approach so we can get this application uh, from the marketplace which is kind of a public product and compare it against other competitor products uh, there there uh, so yeah uh, I can install any app on this device I can uh, analyze and go through market research and get its four, four com, uh, competitors and then do performance tests to see uh, how does my product uh, look in the field how does it uh, look in comparison with other uh, software products yeah so here you can see the graphs uh, the green one corresponds to um, a software which we were run, uh, running uh, we were performance benchmarking on Android for uh, I think 10 or more uh, um, versions so you can see here that the, the, the battery consumption eventually improved here you see there was some kind of a fix and uh, it also improved the battery consumption uh, once we are doing these uh, combination uh, of for instance battery and network tests 
we can look for correlations so if the battery and the network is bad or if the battery and CPU is bad we can do some conclusions after it uh, so you can see here that uh, for the same uh, product X uh, there was there were uh, average uh, data compare data com consumption uh, average data consumption compared for different uh, application versions and it was like sorted by the battery consumption and it's, it, it looks like this so uh, some valuable insights okay uh, next on uh, yeah I mentioned that we do uh, some complex performance testing uh, this is one of our setups as an example uh, so these setups often include battery usage, network, uh, device resource usage monitoring together with media quality monitoring. So uh, in this example we can see that uh, we are performing a four device scenario uh, where all of them are uh, streaming media and we are measuring actually the uh, battery and network at the same time having uh, like two setups uh, running in parallel and also these uh, devices are capturing videos and later on these videos are being analyzed separately yeah and also uh, the last but not the least is automation um, I would say that uh, most of these performance tests uh, are uh, still manual because they require uh, specific setup specific steps and um, Although we are doing some automation as well in this field, but we mostly rely on automated scripts. So yeah, that's about some complex, more complex stuff. And automation allows us also to kind of run these tests in parallel on different platforms, which kind of, if, if you have a, a product which you kind of develop by using React or something like that, uh, and you want to check how it works on Android and on iOS, you can also do these cross comparisons but they are usually not that uh, simple because uh, they rely on because the platforms themselves are really different and if you try to compare uh, onions against oranges it will not be the same but uh, it will be it, it gets closer and closer to that when we are uh, like observing these uh, cross platform uh, development uh, yeah, method <laughs> cross-platform met uh, development. Okay, so yeah, that's in short about it. And uh, thank you for attention. Uh, I would like you to also inform that we have uh, two blogs. One of them is about uh, battery usage testing and another one is about uh, network testing. So this webinar kind of covered the first one, but you are, if you are interested, you can check out uh, the blog about uh, network testing as well. Of course, if you are interested in uh, battery testing and performance testing, uh, you can contact us uh, by through, through this email and ju or just visit uh, testdevlab.com and you can contact us over there. All right. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to look f if there are some questions from the audience. Well, I guess it's the best time now to ask some questions if you have any. <laughs> you can ask me something related to battery testing might be even something related to showing you how this phone works on screen it's like this <laughs> yep this is in Riga office So yeah, we have some cool gadgets here, some soldering irons, some uh, multimeters, uh, some regular tools. This is a nice hammer which says uh, 
which says uh, hard reset on it. We usually use it to hard reset our devices. Okay, thank you for the attention and I guess that's about it. See you in one of our next uh, webinars.